Now let's learn about each of the four chambers that is the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle and left ventricle in detail. First let's begin with the right atrium. The right atrium is the right upper chamber of the heart. It receives venous blood from the whole body through the superior and inferior vena cava and pumps it to the right ventricle through the right atrioventricular or the tricuspid opening that you see right here. It forms the right border, a part of the upper border, the sternocostal surface and the base of the heart. Now let's look at the external features of the right atrium. The chamber is elongated vertically receiving the superior vena cava at the upper end and inferior vena cava at the lower end. The upper end of the right atrium is prolonged to the left to form the right auricle as you see right here. It covers the root of the ascending iota and partly overlaps the infundibulum of the right ventricle. Along the right border of the atrium right here, there is a shallow vertical groove called the sulcus terminalis which passes from superior vena cava to inferior vena cava. It cannot be seen in this diagram. It is produced by an internal muscular ridge called the crista terminalis. Now the upper part of the sulcus terminalis contains the sinuatrial or the SA node which acts as the pacemaker of the heart. The right atrioventricular groove that is the coronary sulcus separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. Now let us look at the six tributaries of the right atrium. We have the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, the coronary sinus, the anterior cardiac veins and the venae cordae minimi that is the Thebasian veins and finally sometimes there is the right marginal vein. Now let us look at the right atrioventricular orifice. The blood passes out from the right atrium through the right atrioventricular or tricuspid orifice and goes to the right ventricle. The tricuspid orifice is guarded by the tricuspid valve which maintains unidirectional flow of blood. Now concising the important points under the introduction of the right atrium and its external features, the right atrium is the right upper chamber of the heart. It receives venous blood from the whole body, pumps it to the right ventricle through the right atrioventricular or tricuspid opening. It forms the right border, part of the upper border, sternocostal surface and base of the heart. Looking at the external features, the chamber is elongated vertically, receiving the superior vena cava at upper end and the inferior vena cava at the lower end. The upper end is prolonged to the left to form the right auricle. It covers the root of the ascending iota and partly overlaps the infundibulum of the right ventricle. Along the right border of the atrium, there is a shallow vertical groove called the sulcus terminalis, which passes from the superior vena cava to inferior vena cava. It is produced by an internal muscular ridge called the crista terminalis. The upper part of the sulcus contains sinuatrial or the SA node, which acts as a pacemaker of the heart. The right atrioventricular groove separates the right atrium from right ventricle. Looking at the tributaries of the right atrium, there is the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, coronary sinus, anterior cardiac veins, vena cordae minimi that is the Thebasian veins and sometimes the right marginal vein. The right atrioventricular orifice. The blood passes out from the right atrium through the right atrioventricular or the tricuspid orifice and goes to the right ventricle. The tricuspid orifice is guarded by the tricuspid valve which maintains unidirectional flow of blood. Now let's look at the internal features of the right atrium. The interior of the right atrium can be divided into three parts. The smooth posterior part or sinus venarum, the rough anterior part or the pectinate part and the interatrial septum between the two atria. Let's look at the smooth posterior part or the sinus venarum. The superior vena cava opens at its upper end. The inferior vena cava opens at its lower end. The opening is guarded by a eustachian valve. The coronary sinus opens between the opening of the inferior vena cava and the right atrioventricular orifice. The opening is guarded by the valve of coronary sinus 
or the Thebaisian valve. The intervenous tubercle of lower is a small projection below the superior vena cava opening. Here is a more clear picture of the right atrium and the right ventricle. As you can see here, this is the orifice of the coronary sinus that opens between the opening of the inferior vena cava and the right atrioventricular orifice right here. And here is the intervenous tubercle of lower. Now looking at the rough anterior part or the pectinate part, it presents a series of transverse muscular ridges called the musculi pectinati. They arise from the crista terminalis as you can see right here and run forwards and downwards towards the atrioventricular orifice giving the appearance of a teeth of a comb. Now looking at the interatrial septum that is a septum between the two atria, it presents a fossa ovalis that is a saucer shaped depression in the lower part right here. The annulus ovalis or limbus fossa ovalis is the prominent margin of the fossa ovalis. Now concising the important points under the internal features of the right atrium, the interior of the right atrium can be divided into three parts that is a smooth posterior part of the sinus venarum, the rough anterior part or the pectinate part and the interatrial septum. Let us look at the smooth posterior part of the sinus venarum. The superior vena cava opens at the upper end, inferior vena cava opens at the lower end, opening is guarded by the eustachian valve. Coronary sinus opens between the opening of the inferior vena cava and the right atrioventricular orifice. The opening is guarded by the valve of coronary sinus or the Thebaisian valve. The intervenous tubercle of lower is a small projection below the superior vena cava opening. Moving on to the rough anterior part or the pectinate part, it presents a series of transverse muscular ridges called musculi pectinati. They arise from crista terminalis and run forwards and downwards towards the atrioventricular orifice, giving the appearance of a teeth of a comb. Moving on to the interatrial septum, it presents a fossa ovalis that is a saucer shaped depression in the lower part. The annulus ovalis or limbus fossa ovalis is the prominent margin of the fossa ovalis. Moving on to the right ventricle.